Lights is the last in a four part video series on my Lightroom workflow. So if you haven't seen the other three, please go back and watch those first and they'll talk about importing, reviewing and editing images before you export them. I have export presets that I've already created and I'm happy to show you those. I suggest that based on what you do, you create your own. I usually export two ways. The first is web optimized and the second is print optimized. Now, I don't say full size, uh, though to the client, for all intents and purposes, it's going to be full size. But actually, depending on the camera you're shooting with, you might be shooting with a lot of megapixels, more than the client's ever going to need, and the file sizes become more difficult to manage. So what I do is I actually create some export settings that enable those files to be a little smaller and more compressed for the benefit, really, of the client and for the transfer and the download time. So let's select this set. I'm going to go in here to export and I'm going to take you through how I would normally set up my two types of export settings. So we'll go to export and I'm going to say, let's put it in the same folder as the original. I always do this so I can find my exports. They go right underneath my RAWs in a different folder. And we're going to put in a subfolder and this one is going to be for web. So yeah, we're going to leave that. You can call it web, web optimized, whatever you can remember easily. I title mine web and print in all bold so that when the client's looking at the two folders, they know the difference between which one's big and which one's small. So I'm going to always say overwrite without warning because I might change my mind after exporting and do a few tweaks and re-export. I don't want it to create multiple versions. I want it to overwrite that file so that it's updated. And I'm going to rename to, and here's what I do. I rename to the actual file name. I make sure that's there. And then after it, I put web. Now, this is important because when you were just looking at thumbnails in a folder, you really can't tell the difference between which one is small and which one is high resolution. So if you have it noted in the file name, it's very easy to search and find the right size file. So this is going to be web done. So now you can see my example. It's going to be the same file name I already had, and then it's just going to append web to the end. And now I'm going to go down to uh, file settings. For file settings, I want it to be JPEG. And for file, I want to limit the size to at least 500 or below. Now, the reason I do this is just it, it, compressing it. If you're going to upload it on the web, you really don't want it too big. In fact, I've had clients come back to me and say, this social media rejected it because the file size. So could you make me a smaller one? So I always give them a small compressed size and limiting the file size to no more than 500K is a great way to make sure you don't accidentally export something really big for your web optimized. So I'm going to resize to fit. And this is what I usually do. Whatever the long edge is, resize the long edge to 1920 pixels. 1920 is standard high definition, 1920 by 1080. So I just do that. 1920 pixels, resolution 72, that's for web, pixels per inch. And I usually do not add output sharpening. And metadata, I include all metadata, which is also going to have my copyright in it. And then I'm not going to watermark in this case, but in another video, I'm going to show you how I would go about watermarking it if I needed to in case I were proofing or in case I were sending it to a client that had not yet finished paying the bill. And then I can hit export. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm over here in my event folder where all my original RAWs are. And you can see that we have now a web folder under there. And this web folder has all the images in web optimized versions, no more than 500 kilobytes. And we could actually set that lower. I have in the past set that lower to like 300 kilobytes just to keep the size down. Now let's do a set for print. So I'm going to go back into export. And now I'm going to say put in subfolder print. Leave everything else there the same. Rename to custom settings. And this custom settings is going to say print at the end. 
All right, so now we can tell the difference between the two files, both by the folder name and by the actual file name. So now we're gonna go down to here and we're not going to limit the file size. However, we are gonna set the quality to 80. Uh, and this just keeps the file sizes from being quite as big. And what if down here I resize to fit and I say that I don't want the resolution on the long side being any more than 4,000 pixels. Still got the quality at 80 and I'm going to limit the resolution to 240. Hit export. Now I go back over here and look uh, and this is, this is still very good for printing at most sizes. Now if you're going on a billboard you probably want it larger. And that's how I would set up my export settings for both print and for web. I would usually render out two different folders and I would provide both to the client. One so that they can easily upload a set to social media or to a website and the other so that they could print it at their leisure. And you might think, well, there you go. That's the end of the story. You've just exported, you provided it to the client what else is left to do? I will tell you that that's the way I felt for a lot of my photography career. I just, as soon as, as soon as the exports were done and the link was delivered and the client had downloaded them, game over. And, and you know, I was on to the next thing. However, you will find that you will start to stack up space on those hard drives. So what I do, and I write this into my uh, verbiage for my client contracts is that the images that I don't provide for them, if I don't have any use for them, I'm going to get rid of them. And in fact, some photographers I've talked to actually get rid of even their selects after they have rendered them out and developed them. The client has approved and the project is finished. They get rid of the raws entirely to just save hard drive space. But what I will often do is I will just go in and find images that have no rating at all. And you can do that right here. You can just go to filter and then go unrated. So here are the images that are unrated. Once, now let me be clear on this. At this point, the, the images are already delivered to the client. Client has approved it. Project has ended. All payment has been received. And I am sure I will not use these images for anything, especially for an event where I shot 2,000 images and I gave them 400 of the best. I'm just gonna go through here and I'm gonna delete these. I'm just gonna hit delete and I'm gonna delete them from disk. And I know that sounds brutal and some of you might be like, what? But let me tell you, I've been doing this for a long time. When you shoot, for years and years and years, you end up having to keep all kinds of hard drives around for tens, hundreds of thousands of images that no one needs, no one is ever gonna see again. In fact, the ones I'm deleting here aren't even ones I ever gave the client or cared about. So not only do I not need them anymore after the project, I didn't even use them for the project. I can easily delete these from disk and save myself a ton of disk space. So this is just a tip for you. If you're shooting all the time and you're accumulating tons of images you don't use, do come back to your Lightroom catalog on occasion and clean it out. If you don't do that, your catalog is going to start getting really sluggish. You're going to end up with all these images in your catalog. And every time you open it up, it's going to take forever to load. Uh, it's just really a pain and it's a waste of space. If you're not going to use it, don't feel bad about deleting it. You can keep your original RAWs on those five starred images if you want, but that is also at your discretion. So that's a really high level, quick overview of what my general Lightroom workflow looks like. All the way from the import to the selection, the editing, and the export of the images. Now there are obviously lots of other things we could cover in here. You can use Lightroom to do some blemish editing and some retouching on your portraiture. And there are a lot of tools inside of Lightroom that I didn't cover today. So if you've got something you'd like to hear more about, please leave me a comment, like, subscribe, support the channel, tell me and I would be happy to share with you the way that I use Lightroom and any tips, tricks, or words of wisdom that can help speed up your workflow, improve your editing, and 
make your photos amazing.